hello viewers welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i will take you through short forms of oral literature and for the purpose of this lesson i will go through two short forms of oral literature and that is tongue twister as well as puns before that viewers allow me to thank all my subscribers i am truly indebted to you Again, to those who are new here, allow me to kindly request you to hit onto that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. We are going to first define what a tongue twister is. And a tongue twister, as you can see from the board, is a sequence of words or sounds that is typically alliterative and that is difficult to pronounce quickly and correctly. When we say that the sequence of words or sounds in a tongue twister are alliterative, we mean that in the line that that tongue twister appears, the initial consonant sounds in the various words that appear on that line are the same. Again, when pronounced rapidly and very quickly, tongue twisters normally pose a challenge. So, in most cases, in an examination situation, like we are now staring at the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, the neck will normally examine by giving a given genre of oral literature. Then the candidate will be required to determine which short form of oral literature that is accompanying the identification question there is always the question touching on the various distinguishing features of a tongue twister as well as the functions and that is what has been done here on this table with the two columns on the first column are the features then the second column the functions of a tongue twister. The first feature, a tongue twister involves the repetition of sounds and words. So there are some cases that various words are repeated on the same line. In other situations, it is the sounds and most cases, the initial consonant sounds that are repeated to bring about the pronunciation challenge. Number two, what we've just said, a tongue twister employs the use of alliteration and assonance. Assonance is always the repetition of vowel sounds in words that appear on the same line. The third feature, a tongue twister is normally pronounced fast and rapidly and always its effectiveness depends on there being no stumbling over the changing sounds. Again, tongue twisters are tas and pithy they normally use short, precise, and concise uh, sentences. They're not lengthy. Then uh, on the second column, we have the various functions of a tongue twister. And number one, a tongue twister helps to improve speech development. It entertains, that is number two. Number three, a tongue twister may be used to criticize human behavior. 
A tongue twister can be used to comment on a natural phenomena. It can also be used to pass time alongside being used in speech drill or training. There are some examples here of uh, tongue twisters. And the first one you can see quite a long uh, word. Akawala ka waka wakwa awakawa. And uh, that is another language. That's not English. Then we have another example there. She sells the seashells at the seashore. So always the effectiveness of a, a, a tongue twister is when it is pronounced quickly and rapidly without stumbling. Uh, another question that is, can be likely asked when it comes to the tongue twister candidate can be given a tongue twister in maybe some local language. And then the candidate will be expected to state what can be lost in an event that the tongue twister is translated into other languages. So normally what is lost is the local flavor and also the originality. Those are the major things that are lost during translation. Very fast, let's move to puns, which poses quite a challenge to most candidates. So if you've been having a challenge with puns, then you can pay more attention at this point. And the definition, a pun is a world play literature genre that exploits different possible meanings of a word, fact, or pronunciation. So an example that we can have, as you can see from the board, that is this statement. Come ye to me and I will heal your souls. So in the context, we expect that we should have heal, that is spelled at H-E-A L. And then the soul in this case is S U L S. But then the spellings of the words here convey a different meaning. Like uh, the heel here is the part of the body, H E E L, as you can see. And the soul here could be the bottom part of the shoes. So there is the use of words here in which their pronunciation could be similar to the words intended, but their spellings are quite different, bringing about the difference in meaning. So that is a pun. Another example in which a pun can also appear is on the second instance where it is mentioned, I went to the bank. So there is some kind of ambiguity on the word bank. And that is what brings about the pun. Maybe the speaker went to a financial institution, the bank. That is the first instance. On another instance, the speaker might have gone next to the river. That is also the uh, bank. Uh, another example, you could have something like, she was beautiful from far and far from beauty. So the, that kind of wordplay brings about the pun. Let us go through some of the features that we have for pun. 
and I want to direct your attention to the second table here. The first feature, a pun uses similar words for different uh, purposes as we saw in uh, the second example I went to the bank. Bank is has various meanings a financial institution and at the same time the sides of uh, maybe a river the other feature is that sometimes puns use words with the same pronunciation but with different spelling and that is what is here on come ye to me and i will heal your souls so the words heal and souls are pronounced the same as the intended word which is heal spelled as h-e-a-l and souls spelled as s-o-u-l-s the various functions on the second column of the table of the pan we have number one pans normally add more meaning to the text it gives a given context to a given text then number two it enhances or boosts creativity because in uh, disambiguating maybe the word that has been used there there is some brain work there is some uh, task for the wit so it enhances or boosts creativity it can also be used for entertainment and then lastly puns can also be used to educate viewers we come to the end of our lesson there the next time we meet we will be talking about the two other short forms of oral literature and that is proverbs and riddles thank you until next time